Are you wondering how much data do you need to train your machine learning model? Join me on this video to discover five strategies to get to the right answer to this question. Hi there, I'm Kelvin Fernandez, co-founder and CEO of Neil AI, and welcome to another AI shop. On this video, I will tackle like the most recurring question I get from new clients, which is how much data do I need to do this project, to train my machine learning model? And, you know, if you ask this to a novice data scientist or to someone that just wants to get the project approved, okay, because they need the budget, basically they will tell you, you know, you need a hundred data points, or you need a thousand data points, or you need a million, a million data points, whatever the number is. Sometimes they will just tell you the number that you, they know you already have. If you have 10,000 data points, they will tell you that's enough, okay, to train the model. My professional answer to you is you never know. Okay, you don't know how much data you need to try a model. Okay, and people get mad when they get the, this answer from me and they say like, well, but you need to tell me, you know, how many data points you need. Okay, and you know, let me give you some professional advice on this. You will never know whoever gives you a number is not giving you like professional advice. And whenever you are taking an AI project, you will take some risks. Risks comes from unknowns, okay? And unknowns is basically, you know, you don't know this, the, the actual output that you will get from, from executing it in a certain way. And this question, knowing how much data you need, is one of the most tricky unknowns to solve. Luckily, you are watching this video and I will show you five strategies that we apply every day and we add it to understand how much data our clients need as soon as possible with minimum risk. By the way, if you're trying to remove as many risks as possible on your new AI project, I will leave a link on the description with an ebook where we tackle all of these questions from data predictions, project opportunity size, etc. Get your ebook, you get your PDF on the link below. So here whenever a client arrives and asks me, you know, how much data do I need? What they are actually asking is not how much data do I need, but what performance will I get with this amount of data? So if I give you a hundred data points, will I get a model that is 90% accurate or 95%? What happens if I give you a hundred thousand data? So basically they need, they want to understand not the amount of data points, but the kind of investment they will need to do to arrive to a certain performance, actual performance, okay? Or performance value. So let me just show you how machine learning models will work in general. So you will start with zero data points and zero performance, of course. Then you will start getting some data and you will see that the model performance starts uh, increasing slowly until you start having like, actual serious amount of data so your model ca can catch some patterns and it will explode, okay? So it will start learning super fast until it reaches a certain plateau and you start collecting more data and the model does improve because it reached like its maximum capacity okay so the beta versus performance has like an s shape curve and what you need to understand is what is your shape what is the shape of your curve for your specific problem and here we'll show you these five strategies to understand where you are on this curve okay so the first strategy and this is the simplest one as long as you are solving a problem that someone else already solved is looking for references, okay? Look out there what other companies did, like the performance they got, and that will be a fair enough indicator of what you, are, what you can expect to get on your domain. Of course, every use case is a use case, every industry is a different reality, but it will give you like a general idea of whether or not that performance will be enough in your, in your scenario. Okay, so that's the first one. The second one is you'll collect data and train models alternately. So you, you do it one by one. You collect some data, you train your model, you, you see the performance. You collect some more data, you train your model, and you observe the performance, trying to minimize the investment you do on data collection and modeling on each step. What you want to learn from this, from this strategy is on which part of the curve you are. So are you still on the exponential part? So you should still see like a, like a huge gap on performance, Yes, that gap is really promising. Yes, so you can still keep collecting more data and investing more on it. If you already reached the plateau, maybe it's time to stop. 
even if you are on the same thousand data points and you were spec and you had a budget for a hundred thousand, maybe it's a good indicator that maybe these use cases won't be as easy as you expected at the beginning. Regardless of your budget, do this iteratively. So product data, train your model, collect some data, train your model, collect some data, train your model. It will it will do you a favor of understanding where you are early on and well, actually, you know, deciding whether you or not you want to invest all your budget on this project. The third strategy is you get whatever you can get and you let your data scientists decide the kind of model they need to use. So if you don't have much data, you, they need to start with some simpler models. So pre train models, fine tuning, transfer learning, your data scientists will know what I'm talking about. And if you, as you get more data, or if you have a lot of data, they can get creative and they can, you know, start getting to a more complex models. But ask them to start with the simple models with small data set, just to know, you know, what can you get from this. By the way, uh, if you like this content, of course, like and subscribe. Now let's move forward to the fourth strategy, which is you will start with some course decisions, okay, so with some course decision support. And as you get more data, you move towards more fine-grained decisions. So do not expect miracles in your first model where you only had thousand data points, ask for some minor supervision, for some minor guidance on your decisions, for some very core decisions, and try to get more detailed or more optimized decisions as you get data. So have this strategy where you have, you know, maths on one, we will get this amount of data with this kind of decision supports. For example, the model will only tell you if there is a failure on a machine or not. Stage two will collect more data, and now you don't want to know only if there is a failure, but also on which part of the machine you had a failure. And that's stage two. Then stage three, you want to know if there is a failure, what is the part, and who is the best person to repair this part of your machine in your production. Okay, so go increase your goals as you get more data, but start with a very simple, uh, with a very low expectation of what you can get. The final strategy that I show you is kind of the opposite. Okay, and you will say, you know, Kevin, you're phrasing how are you now suggesting me to do the opposite? But trust me, it can work, which is if you are not committed yet to a plan or to a goal, if you are, for example, an on an idea stage and you want an early stage startup or an idea scenario, try to solve like the very fine grained decision, like try to solve all potential problems, for example, collect some initial data set and try to detect all type of diseases, for example. Try to detect all type of um, anomalies on your machine, okay? Then train a model, okay? and observe the performance on each one of those tasks. It will tell you which of these tasks has a simplest uh, S curve, so the, the curve that will reach this exponential performance sooner. So you can frame your, your problem, the problem you are trying to solve to that one, to the one, to, to the one that is the simplest one, and you can start collecting the data for the easiest problem to solve. Okay, so it's kind of the opposite. It's not going from the simple decision to the complex, it's actually going from the complex, but, you know, starting with the complex, giving a step back to understand, you know, which one is the easiest and then going all in with a simple decision that will get you the highest performance with minimum data. Okay, so I hope you like this video. Now you have the five strategies to get this answer as soon as possible. If you like it, like, subscribe, and activate the notifications. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.